All right, good day, good day, everyone. Welcome to the Ecolinguist channel. And today we're going to be seeing how well English speakers can understand Bahamianese or the Bahamian Creole. I guess let's start with some introductions. Uh, so my name is Chris. Um, I'm from the Bahamas. And I play the flute. You could follow me at Flute Bay if you want to see some stuff about that. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Laura. I'm from Brighton. I speak Italian, Spanish, French and Hungarian to varying levels. You can check out my copywriting content um, uh, on my website and you can also follow me on Instagram for language learning content. Hello, my name is Edith and I'm from the north of Scotland. I'm a languages student. I speak French and German and then I'm also learning Italian and some Scottish Gaelic. Hi everyone, my name is Austin. I'm a computer science student. Uh, I'm from Idaho in the USA. Uh, I speak English, Mandarin, and a good bit of Spanish, and hopefully I'll tackle something like Swedish or German after this. Super excited to be here. All right, all right, all right. So I guess basically this challenge, we could just be, we have some dialogues and some monologues, and Y'all would be listening to them. I'll tell y'all what y'all should be thinking about before we play each one. We'll see how well y'all understand it, and then we'll go from there. I'll explain anything, and we'll have like a little discussion afterwards. Um, but let's start with the first one. Ah, uh, you doing, babe? You think this a game, eh? You must think this a game. Don't play that with me. You must be thinking guys to conk, but I ain't thinking that. Get your from around here, baby, because I won't go to the movie. So before we play it again, just listen out for what type of emotion you think um, is being expressed in this dialogue, the monologue, sorry. Huh? What you doing, babe? You think this a game, eh? You must think this a game. Don't play that with me. You must think I is the conk, but I ain't thinking that. Get your from around here, baby, because I won't go to the movie. <laughs> All right. Uh, Laura, you want to start us off? What you thinking? Um, I think somebody is trying to figuratively play a game with a person and they're saying uh no i'm not gonna play into your tricks um you can't trick me that's what i think was that correct okay, okay. well anybody else have any um thing they want to add um i thought maybe it sounded like the speaker was trying to tell someone not to break up with them um, I'm not sure, and sort of, they were, it was a relationship problem. I don't know. That was what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, it sounded like the speaker was being lied to, or at least thinks that they are being lied to. Because um, they're asking, hey, you know, you think you can play these games with me? I'm not going to play into them. And that maybe you can get other guys to fall for it, but not me. I have no idea what was said at the end there. It was, I, I was trying to figure it out, but as from what I could tell, this is, <laughs> The overall emotion at least yeah so the overall theme is pretty much right um so yeah lauren austin y'all got that pretty much right um someone was just angry and what did they say um you're trying to play a game with me don't don't do that with me because i'm the conk so basically yeah i'm not gonna fall for your tricks and we just like to say i i'm the conk a conch is like, it's a marine animal that we like to eat. It's like a conch shell, if you know about that. Um, but like, you have to take it out the shell and then beat the conch. And it's like, you're not going to treat me like a conch. <laughs> um, and at the end, um, they said, get your hip from around here because I won't cut no movie. Um, so basically, get away from here. I don't want to cut a movie. I don't want to cause drama i want to cut no scene no and that's basically what all that was trying to say um i thought that the last little bit was i'm not gonna movie as in i'm gonna stand my ground like i'm not gonna move <laughs> <laughs> but i misheard 
Yeah. So I guess we can move on to the next one. So this next one, just try to gather as like as much information as possible and see if there's like an overarching theme to it. <laughs> That's one clean guy. Hold on. That's a Tessie. That's a couple of them. Since when we got Tesla on the island, I wonder where they gurn. Oh, they gurn Bama. Child, I'd hate to be them if one of them break down. Gotta call Elon all the way in Cali. <laughs> okay, let's have a moment <laughs> before we listen to that again. Okay. That's one clean guy. Hold on. That's a Tessie? That's a couple of them. Since when we got Tesla on the island, I wonder where they gurn. Oh, they gurn Bama. Child, I'd hate to be them if one of them break down. Gotta call Elon all the way in Cali. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Edith, you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, it sounded kind of like someone was admiring cars. Um, I thought I heard something about Teslas, and since when have we got Teslas on the island? Um, and then something about maybe breaking down. I'd hate to be them um, if they broke down. I don't know if I've gotten completely the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, good, good, good. Anybody else have anything you want to add? Yeah, it sounded like incredulity to me. Um, you know, I heard that's one clean guy at the beginning and a shortened a shortened word for Tesla. I heard Tessie, which I assume is supposed to be that. Uh, at the end there I was trying to figure out so otherwise I do completely agree with Edith, but at the end some I heard either the word gurn or earn and I'm trying to figure out if they were he was like asking how much they earn um and something like that. But and then at the end yeah, I hate to be one of them if they have to break down that we need to call Elon or another name that i heard after that very interesting dialogue <laughs> for sure yeah 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 so i basically got exactly the same uh as uh the others i don't really have anything uh else to add i think that was pretty quick up yeah so you basically got it <laughs> that's one clean car eh so that was what the first sentence was but yeah we we really don't have Teslas on the island. So the first time I saw one on that island was, it was like a fleet of them going to the Bahama Hotel. Um, they all looked really good, but <laughs> let's see. Yeah, I'd hate to be one of them if they break down. Cause I have no idea who would, and who would be like, which mechanic would work on that car over here? You'd have to call Elon <laughs> all the way in Cali to send someone down and fix it or something like that because you know, nobody around here could be fixing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was good. That was good. <laughs> so the next one is a dialogue. And basically just try to figure out where are we? <laughs> Let's hurry up. I think it's starting already. Stop running, mate. If you drop this popcorn on soda, that's on you. I ain't gonna drop it. But we done here, I guess, so it's okay. Let me catch the door. Mado, I'd always gonna be too late to get a good seat. But ain't nobody in here. For real, we ain't have to worry about no one else in here. Big screen to ourselves. Where you on set? All right, let's just hear it one more time. Let's hurry up, I think it's starting already. Stop running, mate. If you drop this popcorn on soda, that's on you. I ain't gonna drop it. But we done here, I guess, so it's okay. Let me catch the door. Mado, I'd always gonna be too late to get a good seat, but ain't nobody in here. For real, we ain't have to worry about no one else in here. Big screen to ourselves. Where you on set? All right, Austin, start us off. Uh, I think we're 
in the cinemas. Uh, here's what I heard. I said, hey, or I, I heard, uh, hey, we got to run um, or something like that. Stop running. You're going to drop this soda. Um, but it's okay. We're basically done here anyways. And then something about a door or something after that, like catching a door is what I could hear from that. But overall, uh, at the end, there, they were just explaining. It looks like the theater was relatively empty, so they could choose where they wanted to sit. Um, but yeah, I kind of missed that middle section there. Otherwise, that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only thing that I wanted to add to that was the bit about catching the door, I think, was let me hold the door for you. That's my interpretation mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. I got almost the same thing, but I heard popcorn, not the soda, like you're going to drop the popcorn. Um, and then I also, there was a word, it was kind of like mud, mud, I don't know, it sounded, I don't know if it was like, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's another one, farine, is that like for real or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> there were just words that I picked up, thought it sounded kind of like expressions that we would use, but just shortened a lot. So that was interesting. Okay, so yes, we are at the movies. Um, so I guess just running down the dialogue. Um, Stop running, babe! If you drop this popcorn and soda, so we both it was popcorn and soda. Um, that's on you. You don't blame me if you drop them. <laughs> um, I could drop it. We done here. Blah blah. Let me catch the door, uh, Laura. You were right. Um. It's like, let me hold the door open for you because your hands full with all this popcorn and soda. If you try to open this door, disaster. Then Mudo. So Mudo is like a shortened way to say, well, Mudo's sick. And that basically just means like, oh my gosh, oh my God. Um, and anything else you could imagine that means. Um, <laughs> we also did say for real in the second line um for real we ain't have to worry about nobody in here big screen to ourselves. um but yeah so this dialogue it's, it's basically two people observing someone and see if you could figure out like what the person was doing mother sick check on boy murder he punching me for real he must be late Child, I know. He might have forget something. <laughs> Whatever it is, got him like Shawnee. <laughs> you too, fool. Okay, once more. Mother sick check on, boy. Merida, he punching, boy. For real, he must be late. Child, I know. He might have forget something. <laughs> Whatever it is, got him like Shawnee. <laughs> You too, fool. All right. <laughs> Who wants to share their thoughts? <laughs> I think I have an idea. Um, so I think the situation is, is that they're seeing somebody, either trying to chat somebody up or go on a date with somebody, but the person that they're trying to woo is way out of their league. Um, in British English, we have an expression like that says like he's punching or she's punching above their weight, meaning that mm. they're going for somebody who's way out of their league. Um, and yeah, that was the major clue for me. Okay. Edith, anything you want to add? Um... Yeah, so I heard something about the beginning was like, check out that, that guy or something. And then I also heard the punching. I couldn't make head or tail of it. So that would that would make sense as a theory. And then um, I heard something about Sean A. I don't know if that's a person or I just <laughs> heard that. Um, but it was like, I would be Sean A or something. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't get much at all. Uh, I heard fighting, and then the only real sentence I heard the entire thing uh, during the entire thing was, uh, "He looks like he forgot something," or "He forgot something like that." I don't even know where to begin piecing this out. I thought originally there were two people fighting, but then why would you forget something in the middle of that? I'm not really <laughs> sure at all on this one. 
All right, I beat y'all with this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically, is two people and they see someone running. Um, so Mudasek check homeboy is like, oh look at him, and then murder he punching bay. So punching is like when someone running real fast and they do their arms like we call that punching. <laughs> Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then now they're speculating why why he running. What is he? Is he late or something? I don't know. He might be forgot something. Um, but whatever it is, got him like Sean A. Sean A. Um, Sean A. Miller Weibo. She's an Olympic <laughs> gold medalist. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying like Sean A. Whatever it like, is. What what does that even mean? <laughs> Whatever it is, got him running like Sean A. <laughs> and at the end, the person's like, LMAO, uh, you too funny, <laughs> basically. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I catch y'all up with that one. <laughs> so this next one, it's a monologue. Just try to figure out where this person is. Um, yeah. I know why I tried coming here on the weekend. And here, jam up bad. Anyway, let me get these couple things off my list and go home, go cook. Okay, these limes look good for once. Huh? Five limes for four dollars. <laughs> Cheapest I grow tree in my yard because these prices are out of hand. Okay, one more time for good measure. I know why I tried coming here on the weekend. And here, jam up bad. Anyway, let me get these couple things off my list and go home, go cook. Okay, these limes look good for once. Huh? Five limes for four dollars. <laughs> Cheapest I grow tree in my yard because these prices are out of hand. Okay, Austin, you look confused. <laughs> I think we're at the grocery store. I think thing because he said okay let me get a couple of these things off my list and i can go home and cook uh by the second line i have still no clue what was even said there but and then these something these noms is that a word for food i don't know these something are good for once and then four lines for five dollars i have no idea if this is cheap or expensive because it's um there's a mention of price but that's that's all I could catch from that. I I don't even know if he's happy or if he's mad or if he's just in a rush. I I just think he's buying something and then going home and cooking. That's all I can catch here. Maybe at the grocery store. Okay, okay. Yeah, so he it is? sounded like limes. Was it was he talking about limes? Um and then said something about I think the prices were too high because it'd be cheaper to get his own tree or something. Cheaper to grow my own tree. That's what I heard. <laughs> Um, and then Sunday about it being busy at the weekend, so they were annoyed that they'd gone out shopping then. Anything else you want to add, Laura? Not really. I got uh, the same sort of thing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Eden, you got it spot on. <laughs> I know why I tried coming here on the weekend. Um, the food store is always be, we, we just call it the food store, not the grocery store. Or the supermarket um but it has always be nice and jam up too much people is being there on the weekend but anyway let me get a couple of these things off my list and go home go cook so yeah we were talking about limes and for once they look good <laughs> but five limes for four dollars kind of expensive pretty expensive actually and cheapest is like like edith basically got the like the right meaning like it's cheaper to buy a tree um, or grow a tree in my yard than to buy these limes. But we just use that to say like, oh, you might as well have done this or I might as well have done this. Cheapest I do this, cheapest I grow a tree in my yard. Because um, these prices out of hand, they're too high. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, I can see how that was kind of tricky. Cheapest <laughs> might make you think it was cheap, but <laughs> yeah, no. 
Great. <laughs> so I think we've got part one for this challenge. It's really fun to watch you guys. What do you think so far? How is it going? Laura? It's really, really fun. Um, I'm having a lot of fun distinguishing like certain phrases and new vocabulary because um, it's so similar to English, but at the same time, especially when the Creole is spoken fast, it's really hard to understand sometimes. So it's a mix of familiarity and novelty. That's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Edith? Yeah, I would agree with that, definitely. It sounds really familiar and like you should know what they're saying, but then it's also really hard to decipher it. So it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Austin? Yeah, first two challenges, I was like, okay, I got this down. And then the third one just hit like a truck. Um, <laughs> and I'm missing a little more than the others here. But yeah, it's it's close enough to English that I, there are certain phrases that just immediately make sense. And then there are ones where you really have to like, you, you have to come up with a new idea in your head to even begin to understand what they're saying. Um, and that might just come down to, you know, the different Englishes we speak. Because catch the door is not something that I know. Of course, I understand it now, but I had no clue what was going on. <laughs> Part two of this video is going to be published soon. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We do all kinds of language challenges here, mostly based on the mutual intelligibility between languages. If you'd like to appear in future videos, please sign up to our volunteer list. Link in the description box. This has been the Ecolinguist Show. My name is Norbert. I am the host of the Ecolinguist channel, and I will see you in the next one.